<laughs> we are so good when he jokes. <laughs> What's this uh, company called? <laughs> shirts and pants. Holy shirts and pants. It's a little corny and obvious, but what do you get out of stuff, right? <laughs> and boom. Welcome, folks, to the American Movie Podcast. If you've never been here before, welcome aboard. I go through movies, news, documentaries, Netflix series, Netflix originals, and I do trailer reactions. Today, also do book reviews. And today's the book review. So the book review is called Hacking Darwin, Genetic Engineering and the Future of Humanity. That's a mouthful, folks. Uh, it's written by Jamie Metzl, M-E-T-Z-L. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that accurately, Jamie. Um, so this was a crazy book. It's based on... Basically, we're going to be able to engineer or pick the traits our children are going to have through in vitro, which I learned in this book is Latin for in the glass, in vitro. Um, crazy. Anybody who knows Latin, if they if I met somebody and be like, hey, I know Latin, I'd be like, okay, you're probably a demon. Um, they're always spouting out. When people are possessed, they're always spouting out Latin. Um Back to the hacking of the genetic code. So, apparently, the processes are getting really close, like scary close, when we are able to systematically pick which embryo is going to have the best likelihood to have the traits that we desire. Okay? So, what they can do now, I believe, is that they can take a blood sample from a mother or a father and then they can create stem cells out of that. I don't know how. Maybe, I don't know. They probably use a microwave. That's my guess. Um, so they create the stem cells and then they create uh, either a female egg or a female sperm and then they can use that same process with either the man or the woman's blood cell, create the stem cell and create the opposing gamete, what if, whichever one it is. It's uh, the, either the, the sperm or the egg, either or. And then they can do that. And then they can do that a hundred times if they would like to. And they can extrapolate that out. And then they can see which genetic codes of each individual embryo has the most likelihood to either just be disease resistant or it's all predicated it's all predicated upon um, statistics and probabilities and predictions. So it's like, hey, there's a 75% likelihood that this person will um, have Parkinson's disease. Now, it doesn't mean that this person's going to have Parkinson's disease after the age of 60, but the likelihood is 75%. Now, if you're if you have 100 choices of potential children that are going to be inserted in vitro, are you are you really going to choose the embryo that has the likelihood of Parkinson's? Absolutely not. So that, that makes people queasy, and it makes me queasy. But it's, I think it'd be immoral to choose the person that is going to be that's going to have the most likelihood of suffering later in life. You would want to choose the stronger, more resilient embryo of whichever likelihood of disease resistant um, probability you desire. So that's like chapter one. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much, we're going to be able to pick desired traits for the children. And this is due to, everybody's sequencing their medical data. So when people put their medical data online or electronically, then there's humongous data sets and data storages. And then we can cross reference like these, your, well, your genes and then the diseases that you have. And then you do it across huge swaths of populations. And then you can see um, relevancy and significant results that are deemably likelihoods of resistance or disease. Um, disease symptoms, I guess you'd say. And so there was, um, there was a chapter in here that said the end of sex. 
I'm out. No, they just mean the end of sex for procreation. So Jamie, um, bright and precocious Jamie, he is presenting that we are not going to do this natural thing for procreation for very much longer. Because it would seem as if he draws parallels to vaccinations and anti-vaxxers because that's not natural. Vaccines aren't natural. I don't sleep in a house. I sleep outside on the ground with no shoes, no clothes, because that's the most natural. So he draws parallels to anti-vaxxers where they don't think that vaccinations are good for their children because it's not natural. So he draws a parallel with people's attitudes towards this in vitro and predictive human engineering or human enhancement. He, um, he puts it human genetic enhancement. And, uh, he draws the parallel with, well, people will look at that as if it's like just very dangerous. Like you're going to have, you're going to have a child that's not in vitro and you're not going to have the predictive software and you're not going to have the hundred, uh, embryos to choose from that have the most resistance and likelihood to prosper and have a like a nice healthy life you monster so this was a great book man this was this was crazy book um this was in this was just it brought up so much questions that i had never heard of man i heard of crispr and that's about it but i didn't think about the long-term implications i didn't think about like the genetic arms race that he presents so Whichever country that has the most lax guidelines and is putting the most money towards this genetic enhancement is going to get this velocity that's going to run away because these people are going to have better IQs. These people are going to do the Olympics route. So like all the all of these circumstances where just, you know, merit or um, capability where that's needed like intellectual capability or physical capability, there's going to be Fabios that can also run like Hussein Bolt. There are going to be those people to the country that has the most lax, lax guidelines and sequencing the most genetic data and is putting the most money into it. So that country is going to prosper. So that's going to create a this runaway effect and the most aggressive person is going to set the bar, which is really freaking crazy, man. Uh, because China's... De- China is devoting a large economic sums of uh, to up to or to companies that are uh, relevant to AI in this um, genetic engineering. So it's bananas. Um, so yeah, so he didn't really have um, he didn't really have any answers. He just said, "Hey, we have to make sure that our uh, everybody's informed. We got to make sure everybody understands." the processes and the capabilities and the pitfalls that will arise with this crazy world of um, super beings, superhumans that are um, genetically enhanced or genetically chosen to be the most prosperous. So sleep tightly. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I love this book. I mean, it's a short book. It's like 11 chapters. Um, you could nail it. You could nail it in probably a, couple weeks you could take it out and i loved it and if you want to listen to it uh you can get it on audible free trial in the description you get a free book this is a good one to get um yeah i love this book let me know if you read this book what you thought of it if you have any questions about it i'll do my best to answer them hopefully i clarified some stuff i didn't sound like i was in a microwave or i was an embryo um so thank you so much this has been matthew benjamin with the american movement podcast that was hacking darwin genetic engineering and the future of humanity folks so uh until next time thank you so much matthew benjamin bye 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 bye. oh yeah stay good be safe never give up bye 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 after all someone has to pay for the uh lap dances for the big guy (laughs) (laughs) he's joking around (laughs) who feels so good when he jokes (laughs) what's this uh, company called Shirts and pants. Holy shirts and pants. It's a little corny and obvious, but what do you get out of being subtle, right?